Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching. But it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny from Relentless and Unstoppable. Welcome to 2024 and Happy New Year, everyone. Today we have Bianca Villalobos with us. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Where are you at at the moment? Right now I am at my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you're from the San Diego area, is that correct? Yes, I am. Yeah, what's it like over there? It's very sunny, and at the summertime, it gets really hot because the sun is just really bright here. <laughs> Aren't the beaches just fun, like Pacific Beach and La Jolla? Yes, they are. Yeah. What's the best thing about living in San Diego? The thing is really just a community. I do a lot of community service. So one of my big things is going to my Lakeside VFW where I serve meals every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it has veterans and active duty and spouses or siblings of veterans. And it's just a really big and nice community. That's amazing. So you're into pageantry, is that right? Yes. What achievements have you achieved with uh, pageantry? I was honored to be named the Real Hero Award for the Red Cross. And that was such a big honor because I was recognized for my advocacy for type 1 diabetes, which I have. And I've made a group through it called Diabetes Connect. So you can be any age of type 1 or type 2. And it's nationwide. Wide. So I have ambassadors that you're able to recruit other people into my group or they're spreading awareness about type 1 diabetes. That's really amazing. What exactly does type 1 diabetes do? Type 1 diabetes is when your beta cells attack your pancreas. So your pancreas produces insulin if you want a sugary snack or if you want a sugary drink. And mine doesn't do that anymore. It doesn't produce insulin. So I have an insulin pump that helps me get insulin for my food or for anything I would like. And I also have celiac disease. So I can't have anything with gluten. So I'm extra cautious about that too. What happens if you have desserts or gluten in spite of your diseases? If I have gluten, I just get really sick, and sometimes I may get pal, pale, sorry, and I just really don't feel good when I have gluten. I see. So with desserts, it's the same thing, or? 
there is gluten in everything. So in shampoo, conditioner, or an, even an envelope. So I have to check all of the ingredients and make sure there's no wheat, barley, malt, or rye. And there's a whole list, but those are just a few. That's pretty intense. That's amazing that you're staying strong in spite of all that. Thank you. Yeah, I had no idea that shampoo has gluten. <laughs> yes, it does. I learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> what was your upbringing like? Um, sorry. What was your upbringing like? Um, sorry, can you rephrase it? Like, oh, no problem. Uh, what was it like growing up so far until you're where you're at right now? Meaning, what was your childhood like? I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was two years old. So I've had it for most of my life. So sometimes it's been hard. We all grow through those hard times with either if you have a medical condition or you don't. So having type 1 diabetes, I had to grow up fast. But I've also learned a lot along the way. I was diagnosed with celiac when I was 10 years old. And I feel like me being in my community being able to res represent as your national United States junior high and using my platform to spread awareness to help other kids is really just a gift because I want other people to know that they're not alone and that if you ever want to talk to someone, you can always reach out to me. That's great. So how did you overcome all that to get to where you are? When I was five years old, I met... Miss Idaho 2014, Sierra Sanderson, and she wore her insulin pump on the Miss America stage, and I actually got to meet her. So I was super excited, and she showed me that I can do anything I want to do if I set my mind to it, and she is such a big role model for me. Is she famous, or is she just uh, a friend, or... So she does pag she does pageants just like me, and she was the Miss Idaho 2014. Got it. Got it. What achievements have you gotten from pageantry so far, and when did you begin it? I started pageants when I was five. So I've been doing them for almost eight years now, and mm -hmm. I've met a lot of great people. I've been able to receive the Volunteer Service Award um, eight times in a row. I have gold, silvers, and bronze. And I feel like that in itself is such a good achievement because knowing that I can do community service and make a big impact on my community is something that's very important for me. That's incredible. If you had to pick all your achievements in pageantry, which is the biggest? My biggest achievement was being honored to be your Red Cross Real Hero Award because it. I know that I was making an impact and helping someone either in a small community service act of donating or in a big way. That's incredible. The Red Cross are great people, in my opinion. Helping them out is a lot of fun. Yes, it is. Yeah, so what exactly did you do for the Red Frost? Like, were there any, like, community service activities, like washing graffiti off or, or picking up litter on the highway? What did you do? I am a JDRF Youth Ambassador. So I was nominated by the JDRF for the Real Heroes Awards, and I was chosen and I was super excited when I found out because I I felt like it was something that was very important and special. I would agree with that. Leaving an impact on the community is very important, in my opinion, in a good way. And this, I'm sure you would agree with this, but there's more to being a champion than just having a trophy. It's the impact you have on others. You know what I mean? Yes. But it's great that you won that award and have won bronzes and silvers. That's, you're very accomplished, in my opinion. 
Thank you. Yeah. So what was it like being crowned at your recent national? I represented as your California junior high for a whole year and did over 500 hours of service as your California junior high. And then I went to Hershey, Pennsylvania, which was so much fun. We got to go to the Hershey store and I got to meet people from all over the United States. And it was a great experience. And they have the upcoming pageant in July also. Incredible. But have you heard of Women of Achievement? Yes, I have. They're a great organization for pageantry. Have you ever considered being a part of them? Um, I was their junior teen international. Ah, that's even better. That's incredible. Thank you. So was your platform then just uh, about raising awareness for type 1 diabetes and all that in that case? Yes. Yeah, so all of these years I've done pageants, I've been really big on advocating for type 1 diabetes. I was able to go on Good Morning America and advocate for it there, which I knew that I was reaching out to people from all over the world, which was important that I showed them that they're not alone. That's amazing. Good Morning America. Man, that's you, congratulations on that. Thank you. So what are your plans for this year, 2024? This year, I've done over 300 hours of service, and I plan to do over 500 because I know I'm making an impact. I would like to do a lot of community service and get people involved because the smallest thing could lead to the biggest change, and it could be in a good way. Yeah, I would agree. So this is my last question, which is uh, how can your journey impact the world? Showing that I was so little when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And sometimes people don't understand what diabetes is. So that's what I do my best to advocate for it. I have two medical devices, so I like to tell people about them and just show other people with any type of disability that they can really just do whatever they would like if they set their mind to it. That's incredible. You're certainly on your way and you have many more years ahead of you. You're probably going to accumulate thousands, if not tens of thousands of community service if you keep on the path you're going on. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all I have for now. But uh, where can people find you? I'm on Facebook. So I have my page for my pageant, National United States Junior High. And you can also find my group for type 1 diabetics under Diabetes Connect. That's amazing. So everybody, please check her out on her websites and her Facebook page and see her amazing achievements. Thank you for coming on, Bianca. Thank you. Yep. So everybody, please hit like and subscribe if you like this episode. Please support Bianca and Woman of Achievement. And please keep on being relentless and unstoppable. And we'll see you next week for the next episode. Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia saying so long and uh, I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.